Hey, I'm the Catholic Gamer. Welcome back to PCM21 Stage Racer. This is episode 69, and we are on the verge of wrapping up the season. We're at the Tour of Guangxi. Uh, four out of, no, sorry, five out of six stages are flat. They're sprints, which means I'm obviously not contending for those in any way, but this is the exception. It's a punchy hilltop finish which gives me the slightest of chances. Looking at my team, the breakdown, Camargo and Pedersen are a little bit punchy, so with the short kilometers, the I will utilize just the Some two of them. I will utilize a couple other riders in the lead up to it, and then otherwise put everybody on my heels to give us maybe a chance at breaking toe just a little bit uh, behind us as we attack the base of the climb. We're gonna have to go pretty hard, pretty fast on this one. Not quite sure how many K it is, but I guess that's a good thing we can check on now as it is available information. 5.8 K, an oh, average of just 6%. It maxes out at 13 and a half. And that really max is, well, let's see, far, just, just under 1 K. It's about 900 meters long, I would say. So the final 900 meters is quite steep. I would think for me, you don't want to be punchy at that point. You want to climb. You want to hang on and just use those climbing legs and use the punchiness up before that to be in a strong position and then the just hang the on yellow bar wise. If we can get into a situation path. such as that, I like our chances. If the last K comes out punchy, it'll burn through red bar really, really fast. We there want it to be hard earlier. All right, we are down to the final 13K now. And with that climb just over, what, six, seven K away, now's the time to do something about this. Do I want to follow Pedersen or do I want to follow Camargo? I'm probably gonna go with Camargo. Yes. Yeah, similar hill rating, better condition on the day itself. And definitely a better climber, which means he'll keep up with Pedersen for a while while Pedersen hammers out the early, early kilometers of the climb. Now from here, looking at probably just Garrison having the best race day condition and a bit off the back. I think everybody else is up front at least. Uh, who was the one who was off the back a bit? Garrison. Garrison goes straight to the back. There you go. That's three lead out guys for the next four or five K. Go stretch the field. Now, as short as the climb is, well, I don't we think we'll have a problem in the pace. yellow bar. It's going to be difficult to break away now. Ten kilometers remaining. I think we'll have uh, plenty. All right. Let's take a look real quick. See how the team is shaping up. Garrison, yeah, the only one off the back right now. On to Blikra, and yeah, we're going to push a little bit harder, see if Garrison has almost made it up here now. Blikra taking over 5k from the top of the climb, but you can see the climb itself is just about to begin as we get up to 2%, which means we can go 99 with Blikra now, as he is not much of a climber. There are just five kilometers left. You can see how Jones really is the only one that he's impacting. Blikra. Try to get to the back end of this thing. I would imagine Powers is getting dropped. Garrison has made it into position. Is helping break that toe. And you can see for me anyway, at 4.7k, I barely, barely even dented my red bar. But the pace is going to hold others off. And we're ready to go. So we have 4K, 4.1K anyway, left in this thing. You can see it's going to ease off just a little bit. Let's hope that Pedersen, we're going to try a 95 with him, which is his punch maximum. All right, we're going to go 95 with him and see if he can't get us at least into that flatter section. Hopefully he can make it that far. 
Uh, we'll go 96, actually. Because here comes the others. Old guard. And see how red bar wise that's starting to do some damage. But that first attack, those guys are done. We are into that flatter section, I believe. Did he make it that far? You better believe it, he did. I want Camargo to take over when it ramps back up as we come around this left-hander. Use the gel for me. And Camargo. Transcend, 92. Give a little push. These guys are attacking, but they're attacking from 2k out. And they keep on attacking. Anyone that's low on gas definitely now. won't be able to keep up. Alright, let's see how we do with the 91. Let's see, I'm already making my way up beside these guys. I'm third wheel here with just over 1k to go. But that 1k, remember, this is the steepest part. It's in such 700 meters, we're out front now, still pushing, still gaining, and attacking for the last 300 meters. Red bars used up, we're into that yellow, and we are going to hang on for the victory. Congratulations. And opening a gap. Aliote on the right-hand side was about 8 seconds down, I want to say. Van Hoke, Van Wilder, Gal. Adam Yates, Dina, Lutsenko, Rodriguez, Camargo grabs 10th, and then Latour. 12 second gap. 12 seconds. And then there is 42 seconds to that next group, so I think all the sprinters are going to have missed out because everybody's pretty much on that 42 second time other than a handful of guys way off the back. And yes, with that additional gap, it's enough to put myself in the race lead by 16 seconds. Van Houck, the guys who finished near the top of the stage are the ones that are left. And we're looking at a small group of just 14 riders at that 22 second gap. Nasser Buwani, who won, I believe, two out of the first three stages and then had an additional time gap. No, just the two. I think he was, well, yeah, 14, I don't know. Whatever the case may be. Uh, come up, um, do, 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 Buani. Buani had about two stage wins, and that's enough for him to retain 15th. But uh, if his group wasn't that additional 20 seconds off, he would have been about five seconds behind me, I believe. Last time I brought this up, I think I ended up cutting it out. If I didn't, I apologize because that was just recent, that was a couple episodes ago. But this is that difficult stage in the game where you get to to be good and then any time and every time there's any chance whatsoever of the profile matching your your race type the team will literally expect you to win each and every time so then when you do win the evaluation is good job you i mean it's you know the tiniest pat on the back we gain 18 points of progression, 18 XP. We just won comfortably. It took over the race lead, and we only gained 18 experience points. That's the harsh, harsh nature. Also, we just won, and we picked up 4% manager satisfaction. They're just not impressed. They're numb to winning. But you better believe they get super ticked off when you don't win. With a 16 second lead, my win for the overall should be secure as long as I don't crash. Nothing crazy happens. Speaking of something crazy, one of the only opportunities for something crazy to happen is these two climbs coming up. So put myself in my max climbing speed and just get over the top. I have an easy enough time here at keeping up. Plus I have a team to help chase it down as they know I am the leader of the race. Right, we can push towards the front. Set tempo for a little bit. There you go. I dropped Jones off the back, but that's all good. All right, so we have 30k left to go till we reach the finish of the race. Here's the thing about pro cyclist mode. Early on in that first year or so, you want every last experience point you can get so you get competitive. 
once you do get competitive, as we were just talking about a moment ago, the experience becomes few and far between. The are it gets really hard to... Stage, which will most likely end up in a mass sprint. Van Hauk has fallen. It gets really hard to earn XP after a certain stage. And so what you're left with ultimately is the opportunity to just speed things up. I'm not a sprinter, therefore a sprint is not my profile. I would not do this stage, but it's the last stage. So I quick simmed all the non punchy stages besides this one. And the reason for that and the reason why you want to do that, if you're not familiar with the Pro Cyclist mode, you haven't played in a while, or you've only just recently picked it up, as we're into the final couple K, and we're going to get uh, Pedersen to sprint. Uh, I don't need my gel, it's fine. Pedersen, nice takeoff there. He's very much out front. My sprint came a little bit later because it shifted uh, where I was. I was located here. I clicked Great sprint stop. and nothing Team happened. Really I looked up and saw that it moved me. Not that I was going to be competitive. Main thing was to not get dropped. Koij, Gidich, and Buwani are your top three. Pedersen's early move does not pan out. He was supposed to be leading me out. I just didn't follow terribly well. Uh, but anyway, the reason why you don't skip the last stage is that's where the bulk of your XP comes from. The other ones, they didn't matter. So I was able to bypass four stages shave a lot of time off of what it took to get through this race did the stage that counted got the win took the lead and did this stage that also counts to ultimately pick up the rest of the xp if i had quick sim this i still win the race i still get credit for winning the race but i don't gain any xp from doing so and holding the lead for the other stages doesn't amount to anything but what happens by finishing on top is i get this first in the final general classification fourth in the kom first in the young rider plus 55 points so i won the stage that was the pivotal moment i got at 18 xp i did nothing here i didn't have a high finish i just cruised across the line but i claimed the overall that was worth a lot more xp than the other one so just quick tip for those who are not familiar now i know Many of you have played the game thoroughly. You know all about it, but for those that don't, just thought I'd throw in that little tidbit. Also, there's that manager satisfaction bump by claiming the overall victory. Almeida has made the biggest move this season, leaving Astana for Dukenic Quickstep. The other biggest move, Champasin to Direct Energy, uh, Asgreen to Israel Startup, Bennett to DSM, Adam Yates to Delco, Simon Yates to Jumbo Visma, so neither of them will be with Ineos, or Bike Exchange for that matter. Uh, Hamilton to Movie Star, Mataway to Bike Exchange, Landa to Ineos, Caruso to Dukenic, and Turgis to UAE. With that, we have completed our 35th career victory. We have a single monument, single classic victory to our name we have the young rider classification at the tour we have the pink jersey for the giro and the young rider for the giro the individual time trial at the world championships and both u.s titles and we've definitely taken a big step up this year getting second in the super prestige after finishing seventh a year ago not quite doubling our points from a year ago where we had quadrupled them from the year before which also was about quadruple what it was the year before so that first year we had 124 points 540 2058 and now 37 57 i had enough to win the world tour rankings ahead of bernal and pagacher but it was van art who took the top of the charts in super prestige and this is still not job complete. There's still more to do. For one, we only finished second, though we were only a couple hundred points off of the overall. But there's, there's some wins to be had. 
We're going to take one last look at the team, kind of the final one additional signing here to wrap up the season, and it is another writer re-signing with the team. It was either Garrison or Jones. It was one of those two at the bottom, uh, maybe Powers. Uh, it was definitely not one of the key members. So we do have a number of returning writers, six in all. The three that are out, unfortunately for us, were the three best support writers we had. Delay might rank above Camargo and Pedersen, in terms of actual quality, but the lie as a sprinter is not useful, not helpful for me in any way. Alves, Camargo, and Pedersen were the useful trio, and the only useful ones. It sucks that we're losing them. The one good thing, though, is that Foss, Dombrowski, and Goosens are going to be similar, and maybe even slightly better. Slightly. Not by much, but maybe slightly. And you can see that in the Spiderweb profile here. We're not going to be as punchy because Pedersen is gone and, you know, what we're being re replaced with is pure climbers, even though, you know, they're not necessarily great at it. Uh, we're definitely losing some cobbles, and I think that's Alves. Yeah, Alves with a 69, uh, and he's losing the punchiness as well. I mean, you're losing two punchers and one climber to get three support climbers. So for that, the time trial is better. That's good for the team time trials. And we are better in GC by a small margin. The team overall is this much better than it was this year. But I do think I'm going to be able to rely a little more heavily on Foss, Dombrowski, and Goosens than the outgoing trio. And for that, we might be able to do a little bit more next year than this year. And of course, my own development over the course of the season throughout last year and for the year to come. That combination should be just enough to make us just that little bit more competitive. It's still pretty iffy, though, uh, without team support on this difficulty. If we were playing on normal right now, we'd, we'd be winning every climb most every climb anyway uh even without the team support because you could just go out and do it if we were playing on easy we'd be winning we'd be winning regular races by five ten minutes uh where we're at but on that harder difficulty that extra bonus that they get they they keep up and it's really really hard to leave them behind and for you to maintain but we find a way, we get wins, we're up to 35 now, and we've had some big wins in the career. We've done the Giro, it'd be nice to get the Tour, it'd be really nice to get Vuelta as well. Vuelta seems a little easier at this point, I think the Tour might still be a little out of reach as a, a pretty huge ask, but you never know, you never know. Uh, we're obviously getting closer. That 85 mountain is great. The 79 hills really helps in certain scenarios. The time trial is still good. Uh, it's good enough. You know, you could always use another point or two there, but I'm perfectly happy with the 79 time trial as a as a stage racer. The acceleration is good, but the sprint is bad. We don't win sprints. But the acceleration is enough to get some explosiveness that combined with the hills rating it's enough to get some separation and then you know that 85 mountain is enough to then tone it down and run your pace the resistance is almost making that possible now almost it's up to a 76 if we can get that a little bit higher because especially with everybody else getting that bonus they're they're higher to begin with and they have about a plus five to it every race, regardless of, of fitness. So if they're a 79 and 80 to begin with, and they're they're adding plus five, you know, it's my 76 versus their 84. And that's why when I win, it's because I have the high race day condition, the plus three, the plus four. And that's because that's putting me into the low 80s. And if I can get in the ballpark, if I can be neck and neck with them, 
I beat them majority of the time. But when they're this much better, I'm doing good to not lose. When they're this much better, that's where we're still struggling, especially when we're lacking the team support. So if I don't have that race day condition bonus, and they do have those bonuses in check, it's it's too much. One, two, three of those riders struggle, make mistakes, but not when there's 10 of those riders. Seven of them are still on it, and then I'm struggling to keep up with them. Except when I have that higher race day condition, in which case I'm in that mix over and over and over again. But without that team support, I don't have that shelter to make that resistance and stamina carry on a little bit longer. That extra shelter really, really makes a difference on shifting that balance, shifting the disadvantage into, you know, something even. I can beat them even. There's, it's hard to beat them when you're off. And that's why these unimportant races like this tour of Guangxi, Adam Yates was there. There was quality riders around me, but not the best riders. And we won that easily. We won that comfortably. We broke away. We left everybody behind. Simple tactic, easy tactic, easy win. I just don't face that scenario very often in the big races. And especially when we've got such a weak team around us. Uh, you know, if we were riding for Gemma Visma or Ineos or Movistar, uh, we'd be winning a whole lot more than we are. But we've done well. We've done well to be where we're at and make the progress we've made. That is going to do it for this episode and this season. Ready to start a new one coming up and I'm happy to have that because I honestly thought we were going to be solo on the team and that this would have been the final episode but no we have another season we have more work to do we still have a few levels to gain ourselves we're not going to get much better than we are now we're almost capped out uh, and you know the progress is really slow at this stage but there's still more to gain a little bit especially the resistance, the stamina. It'd be nice to have a few more sprint points. Looks like that one's not not to be, but for me, resistance and stamina, that's that's number 1 now. We're punchy enough, we climb well enough, we have enough acceleration, we have enough time trial, we have more than enough recovery. I just want that stamina and resistance to help draw a level, right? To not have to rely on excellent race day condition all the time, which is why I make such a big deal about that because that that's the difference. That's the part where we can't overcome, can't keep up. I'm Kathleen Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.